classroom community, and particularly that last piece of trust in a classroom, is really important online because we don't often see our students. We may have run into them at an event or a campus activity, but not in the classroom. So creating that relationship where students feel comfortable asking questions and where they are open to reaching out to either other students or to the faculty member can be a lot more of a challenge. There's not just a couple minutes at the end of class where they feel like, oh, I'm just gonna go up there and ask a question real quick. So we really have to be intentional and foster that relationship building, making students feel welcome to ask us questions. And the types of activities that we can include in this, really those discussion boards, reaching out to students, and the feedback that we give on their assignments can open those doors and make students really feel welcome and open. They don't sit next to a student, they don't see the student's face, uh, they don't hear their voices necessarily, and so, and because the same reason a faculty member might put their online class on the back burner, a student will do that too. If the student has kids at home and has um, a job that they're working on, they might forget about the course um, very easily. And so you want them to feel connected to the other classmates. You want them to feel a sense of obligation to the other classmates. Um, I use discussion in my class. They, I, I set up really clear parameters where they have to log in three days a week. Um, they have to have uh, a particular number of responses to other students in the discussion forums. Um, the icebreaker, right away, they need to feel like they're part of a community because they can feel very alienated in their at their computer, in their home, wherever their home is, away from all the other students. So um, super important to do that. So I have an icebreaker my first um, uh, week. I also encourage them to use photos. Uh, so if they're not comfortable putting a face uh, to their name, I say, you know, then, you know, a picture of your cat or something that you feel kind of represents you. But that just gives them a little bit more sense of that embodiment for that student. And I think it works, you know, I, I, um, I also split them into small groups too, and I think that creates that small community feeling as well. Building a sense of class community is extremely important because the students need to feel comfortable working with each other, answering each other's questions, um, being uh, helpful f to one another. Uh, at first, I think students don't believe they can learn from other students, but if the activities are created uh, in, a, in, a, in an appropriate way, they can learn from each other and they realize that um, somewhere into the course and they start interacting a little bit more and then they start teaching each other. So they learn from each other and then they realize, oh, I might know something that, they could, that could help this other student. So I think putting the activities together in a way that gets them talking first right away, like in the icebreaker, is really important. I start out by talking about why people read literature. I teach literature and composition course. And, uh, and then I ask them to introduce themselves, tell what their favorite kind of book is to read, what was the last book they read, and if they have a favorite author. And a lot of my students are um, parents, single parents or otherwise, and they like to talk about how they don't have time to really read. They used to read a lot more, but now Dr. Seuss is their favorite author, and you know they're uh, um, used to reading children's books rather than anything else. But they say they're looking forward to reading in my class because it, they have to do it, and that they hope they'll enjoy it too. So I do that as an icebreaker, and they really start talking. But do you know about this author? If you like him, you'll like her. And they really do um, start sharing. And they talk about, well, you were in my psych class last semester. You know, they make connections in other ways outside of the class in that first icebreaker. I let them use VoiceThread. I don't, I don't find that a lot of them do it. I think it takes them longer to use VoiceThread uh, than just to type a post. So, and then longer to listen to the VoiceThread than to read uh, somebody's post. So I don't, I offer that opportunity. They don't use it a lot. Um, I do have oral presentations in my class where they do have to video um, themselves talking. And so that helps a little bit. Um, I use voice, I use voice narrated PowerPoint lectures or I use video of me lecturing um, instead of giving them print texts. But I find that they're not, not as quick to use it. Community is something that's difficult to build, no matter whether it's in a physical community, downtown in a neighborhood, or online. So 
community isn't something that you can force and it has to be really part of a, a culture change in an online course. So everyone usually comes in to the class with their individual goals and the individual reasons that they are working through this course content. But to then start to create this more universal goal and this collaborative working together mindset in a class can be difficult. So it's just being persistent with that and continuing to open doors for students and giving them opportunities. That's really what we see as being helpful. Some professors are uncomfortable with the free-flowing nature of that kind of interaction. Um, and may, I'm not sure why they wouldn't want it, them to introduce themselves in the beginning. But I do know they're not especially comfortable with interaction during the class sometimes. Discussion, uh, maybe they think of it as discussion in a regular classroom where it seems like a diversion from what they should be doing. And I also think some faculty don't understand how to make the discussion and the student interaction um, accessible. So if you have a discussion and you don't score anything about that discussion, the students won't participate. It's not worth any points. And the faculty get discouraged because no students come in. Asking this, the faculty member to give the discussion or the interaction, whatever it is, um, some kind of value in the course means they have to figure out why they're using it. And, and it's, it's hard. Discussion and interaction is hard. They also, I think, have some hesitation because group, they think of it as group work, and everybody hates group work. We all know we should do it, but it's hard. So I've been doing this since 2007, so 10 years, and I've gone back and forth where I've had them, uh, I required a lot of posts and a lot of discussions in one week and found that I was overwhelming them because there was too much expectation for them to engage. I wanted to make it too much like my face-to-face -face discussions, and then I went the other way and had too few um, posts required and then they really were unengaged. Uh, so I think the, that that's something to watch out for. I don't know if I call it a pitfall. I think the other thing with discussion, I remember early on being away from a discussion just for three days. I hadn't checked in and in the three days that I had been away, it had blown up. One student had gotten in and had said something that offended another student and then a bunch of other students jumped on to that and because I wasn't there to moderate. Um, and hadn't at that point set up any clear expectations for ha what to do if this should happen and how to interact with each other. Uh, and so I learned in that moment that I had to watch out for that in the future. So I guess that's a pitfall too. So now I have a list of netiquette that I give to students and clear uh, directions for what to do if I'm not logging in. You know, and I try to log in uh, frequently, um, but it can happen very quickly. So that's always something to watch out for and then to address it as quickly as possible. There's a time in every class for socialization and where students need to be able to kind of go outside of the content. But ultimately in an online class, what we're trying to do is having them connect their content to their everyday lives. So finding the blend and a balance of when is it okay to sort of deviate from the prescribed content and the things that we have going on and being able to incorporate those interests that our students have into the actual assignments that create that community can be really important. So really giving our students opportunities to showcase where they're using the content of the course in their everyday lives can be kind of twofold and very helpful. It all goes back to best practice in the sense of why are we here as educators and that's because we want our students to succeed so the practicality of creating a relationship with our students is so that they feel like they're getting the education that they came for.